After discussing uniaxial anisotropy, we can now move on to cubic anisotropy. And this can be uh, described with uh, one constant equation to a first approximation, uh, or we can use two constants uh, for a better approximation. So uh, how are we going to describe the cubic anisotropy? So a first approximation for the cubic anisotropy is a one constant equation. And uh, we can basically uh, describe it uh, using this equation with the angles defined as follows theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 are angles that the magnetization makes with three crystal axes x, y, z respectively. So you can see here, theta 1 is the angle it makes with the x-axis, theta 2 with the y-axis, and theta 3 with the z-axis. With this, the anisotropy energy can be written as Ea is equal to the first constant, K1, if it's a one-constant equation, cosine squared theta 1, cosine squared theta 2, plus cosine squared theta 2, cosine squared theta 3, plus cosine squared theta 3, cosine squared theta 1. This is the one constant version. Uh, if you continue, the second one is K2, cosine squared theta 1, cosine squared theta 2, cosine squared theta 3, and etc. So we can have uh, better descriptions with more constants. So this is the two constant version, but uh, we can only include the first constant uh, to a good approximation. Okay, uh, now let's give an example. Uh, for example, I'm trying to find the anisotropy in the 0, 0, 001 plane. Let's say that my magnetization will be in the 0, 0, 001 planes. Uh, 0, 0, 001 plane, uh, I can show here. Equivalently, I can say 1, 1, 0, 0. It's the same thing, but uh, it basically intersects x and y axes at infinity and intersects z at a one lattice constant or, and all planes parallel to it will be in the same family. So let's call this the 0, 0, 1 plane. And uh, it, if the magnetization is going to be here, then we have theta 3, the magnetization makes an angle with the z-axis, will be pi over 2. So cosine theta 3 will be equal to 0. With that, if I go back to my uh, anisotropy energy, I will have uh, only this term, cosine squared theta 1 and cosine squared theta 2. So the anisotropy energy in the 0, 0, 1 plane will be k1 cosine squared theta 1 cosine squared theta 2. However, since the magnetization is to lie on this plane, there is a relationship between theta 1 and theta 2. Theta 1 is a 90 minus theta 2, or pi over 2 minus theta 2. Let me write it that way in radians. It's pi over 2 minus uh, theta 2. So uh, cosine squared uh, theta 1 will be equal to sine squared theta 2. We can write it this way because uh, cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is sine theta. So uh, I can continue 
uh, with some trigonometry here. So the anisotropy energy Ea will be equal to k1 uh, cosine square theta 2 um, sine square theta 2 cosine square theta 2 sine square theta 2 cosine square theta 2 I can write this as a 4 k1 over 4 uh, sine square theta 2 cosine square theta 2 because 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta I can use this relationship this is going to give me for the anisotropy energy k1 over 4 sine square 2 theta 2 so this will be the anisotropy energy or I could write this as uh, in terms of theta 1 as well it would be the same uh, thing okay so uh, cosine square turned into sine square and because I have uh, this cosine and sine together uh, with the half angle formula this becomes k1 over 4 sine square 2 theta 2 now what are the easy axes uh, so le let me ask you where are the easy axes of this magnetization? Well, for that, I'm, uh, we have to uh, look for a minimum anisotropy energy, Ea. So we need to take a derivative of the energy with respect to theta. So we will find that this is going to be uh, 2k1 over 4 sine 2 theta 2 uh, then the derivative of 2 theta 2 with respect to theta will give me 2 and then the derivative of the sine will give me a cosine 2 theta 2 so this is going to be 4 over 4 the 4's will cancel it's going to be uh, k1 sine theta 2 cosine theta 2 has to be equal to zero so uh, when is this zero when theta 2 is equal to uh, zero it is zero when theta 2 is equal to pi over 4 cosine pi over 2 will be zero uh, and again when theta 2 is equal to um, pi over 2 what would what would I have uh, for pi over 2 it would be sine pi which is 0 and then 3 pi over 4 would give me 0 2 pi would give me 0 etc so these are the angles so now it depends on if k1 is positive or negative so let me check what happens when theta 2 is equal to 0 uh, I have um, the anisotropy energy Ea is equal to zero. When theta two is equal to uh, pi over four, the anisotropy energy will be equal to uh, k one over four. So as you can see, the 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 two values are different. So these are extremum points. Uh, but are they maximum or minimum it depends on the value of k so I have two possibilities if k1 is positive theta 2 equals to 0 is a minimum if k1 is negative theta 2 equals to pi over 4 is a minimum so uh, that tells me that if uh, theta 2 is equal to uh, zero theta two was the angle we make with the uh, y-axis so theta one will would be a uh, pi over two so that would be the uh, z uh, basically zero one zero direction so um, k1 positive uh, then I have uh, the The following uh, family of directions being uh, minimum 1 0 0 uh, 1 bar 0 0 
a 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 bar, 0, are the easy axes. Because I can have uh, pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4, it would give me the same thing. And uh, the same thing is true for uh, 0 and uh, pi, so it would give me the same thing. However, if k1 is uh, negative, then you can see that uh, the angle can be pi over 4, which means halfway in between uh, these two axes. So then I would have uh, the 1, 1, 0 direction uh, or um, I can say that the family of directions uh, 1, 1, 0 family of directions are easy axes and here I can also say uh, 0, 1, 0 family of directions are easy axes. Okay, so uh, it depends on the value of k1. Uh, for example, body-centered cubic iron has a 1, 0, 0 easy axis. Uh, the k1 value is 4.2 times 10 to 4 joules per meter cube k2 value is 1.5 times 10 to 4 joules per meter cube. So as you can see, k1 dominates. Uh, for FCC, face-centered cubic nickel, uh, 1, 1, 1 uh, axes are easy axes, uh, etc. So we have um, different applications uh, de depending on the value of uh, the k1 value, the k1 uh, constant. Okay, so we talked about uh, as a second example cubic anisotropy. Um, you can see that um, when you have a magnetization that makes an angle theta one with easy x axis, theta two with y axis, and theta three with z axis, the first approximation to cubic anisotropy is k1 times. Uh, direction cosines uh, squared, cosine squared theta 1, cosine squared theta 2, plus cosine squared theta 2, cosine squared theta 3, plus cosine squared theta 3, cosine squared theta 1. And if you need the second order term, it's k2, cosine squared theta 1, cosine squared theta 2, cosine squared theta 3. So based on this anisotropy energy, how do I find easy axis for a cubic crystal? For example, if I'm looking for easy axis in the 0, 0, 1 plane, uh, that means theta 3 is pi over 2. My uh, energy formula boils down to uh, k1 over 4 sine squared 2 theta 2. Then I look for minimum in the energy. W what angle makes this energy minimum? Uh, it's either 0 or pi over 4 or pi over 2 or 3 pi over 4 or 2 pi etc. So it goes like this. And um, 0 is minimum when k1 is positive and k1 over 4 is minimum when k1 is negative for the energy. So um, depending on the k1 value, if it's positive, uh, 1, 0, 0 directions or 0, 1, 0 directions, etc., though that family of directions will be easy axis. If k1 is negative, 1, 1, 0 family of directions will be easy axis. A good example is BCC iron by the centered cubic iron. 1, 0, 0 is the easy axis. You can see the anisotropy constants here, K1 dominates. Uh, similarly, FCC, face-centered cubic nickel, has 1, 1, 1 easy axis. So when you make these samples uh, single crystal uh, in this cubic structure, we're going to be dealing uh, with...